first thing I did was to try out for the basketball team. Um, showed up in August, I was trying out in September. And unfortunately, hey, I didn't make the, I didn't make the basketball team. You know, life life is very interesting because, you know, you know when, when something doesn't work out, sometimes it's it's, uh, it's for a bigger purpose. But then I got introduced to the game of football, and changed my life. Hi, my name is Kato Chuku. Some people call me Kato. But most people know me as K. I'm originally from Nigeria, born and raised. Um, grew up in Nigeria all the way to age 18, and then moved to Canada. Now I live in Hamilton, Ontario. Growing up in a in a big family, being the youngest, you know, anybody who's who knows about big families just knows, you know, the youngest as the youngest one, you play a very interesting role in the family. You know, you you go through you go through your ups and downs. You you get bullied. You know. You, you fight back too, at the same time, um, you get protected. A lot of people say the youngest ones are the spoiled ones. I don't, I don't think, I don't agree with that. I think the youngest one is usually just protected every once in a while from, from the older ones. My dad was very hardworking, still is. My mom, very hardworking. Um, learned a lot from, from both of them in terms of uh, hard work. Dedication, I, I learned that from my father and my mother from a very young age. We went to high school. Finished high school in, in, uh, at age of 17. My, I had a cousin who was going to school actually here in Canada. He was going to Queen's University. He, he brought up the idea of, of uh, me moving to Canada for university. And uh, he helped me with that process. Went through the process. Um, decided that I was going to make that move. Um, didn't move with anybody else in my family but myself. And uh, made the transition. Now, being an international student, you know, tuition is different. Obviously, you know, the fees and, and everything that comes with that. So from day one, even before I got here, from day one, I knew that I was going to need assistance financially because there was no way I was going to put anybody through the burden of trying to see me through school. And I definitely couldn't do it on my own. My answer was, uh, was to fight for a sports scholarship. I showed up to Canada, the first thing I did was to try out for the basketball team. Um, showed up in August, I was trying out in September. And unfortunately, hey, I didn't make the, I didn't make the basketball team. You know, life, life is very interesting because, you know, you know, when, when something doesn't work out, sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's for a bigger purpose. But then I got introduced to the game of football and Changed my life. I went to school at University of PEI, but I played football for Holland College. I had to see my first financial assistance. It was a thousand dollar check from Holland College for you know how well I did in my first year, my my first uh, football season with them. And after that, I had a uh, I had scholarship offers to to a couple of universities in Canada. One of them being Saint FX, Saint Francis Xavier University, in Nova Scotia, which is my uh, my decision where I ended up going to school. So I transferred from UPI to St. FX for, on, a, on, a, on a scholarship to go play football and get a university degree. Originally, I was a science student. I was, uh, I was, a, I was a bio major, majored in biology. Um, you know, when you, when you grew up in a country like Nigeria, truthfully, in, in my time, you know, you, you, you think you, the, only, the only way the only way you can make it, I don't want to say make it, but the, you know, the, the career paths are, are very, very straightforward. You go into law, you go into medicine, you go into um, engineering, and so on and so forth. So um, leaving Nigeria, obviously, you don't, just, you don't just pick up and leave. You, you have to have a plan in mind. My plan was, hey, I'm going to go out here, I'm going to study sciences, I'm going to end up being a doctor. Now, my whole life changed when I started playing football. When I needed a scholarship, I already knew, hey, I was going to take a different path. But my whole life changed when I started playing football. Um, I must mention, the, the, my time in PEI was great. I had a very close-knit Nigerian community, and, and that really helped me settle into Canada because I had a, I had a family away from home. You know? I went to St. FX University. Um, that really changed. That changed everything for me because now I was, playing, I was playing this game of football that I really didn't know anything about initially and now I was I was on a on a full scholarship for this game. I, I you know 
never really, you know, play, played a little bit of soccer back home, a little bit of basketball, but being on a team in terms of team sports, that, that really changed my, it really changed my life, changed my perspective on life too, you know. You, now I had another family away from the family that I had and away from the family that I have back home. So, um, you know, definitely um, formed a bond and, and brotherhood with a lot of, a lot of great individuals. Um, and I, w I won't mention any names. They all know, they all know themselves. Game, you know, playing the game of football, being away from your family, um, it taught me a lot of discipline. You know, I, I learned to be very disciplined. I learned to be, to be very dedicated. To Canada in 2011, I did not go home till 2017. And I did not see family until 2017 as well. Again, the game, you know, be, being with the, the family that I had at St. FX and, and uh, just the game of football in general, it really, it really taught me a lot of, I matured, I grew a lot in terms of, uh, being disciplined and just being dedicated and putting your mind to something and no matter what you put your mind to anything in life i mean anything in life you will get it done so trust me you're talking to a guy who who knew nothing about football and ended up um getting a scholarship first of all 2017 i graduated university at st fx with a business degree in marketing um my father was able to travel down to, to canada for my graduation and um at the, coincidentally, at the same day I graduated was the same day I got drafted uh, to the Hamilton Tiger Cats on the CFL, where I still play today. Three years into the CFL, it's been uh, it's been amazing, man. You know, it's it's been great. I uh, I grew a lot, man. You know, I, I came into the CFL as a defensive lineman, and in 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 my in my second week of training camp, I got switched to the offensive line, to the other side of the uh, other side of the ball, and. Um, it was like starting all over again, you know, started learning, you know, the game all over again. You got to persevere. You got to, you know, you got to, you got to grind. You got to, you got to love it. You got to love the grind, you know, and, and honestly, that's, that's me to this day. I, I love the grind. I swear to God, I do. I love the grind. In 2020, I started a, I started an initiative that is called the KO Initiative giving back to, to, to the people in where I'm from, the people in, people in Nigeria. But you know, there's always debates of you know, how, how do you do it? What do you do? You know, where do you start? I take leadership. I take leadership in, in, in inspiring other people to, to make a difference however they can. Buying, and, buying backpacks and school sandals and, and some care packages and school supplies and what I did was I, I supplied 30 children, 30 orphanage kids with um, backpacks, school sandals and, and care packages and school supplies um, in 2020. I also sponsored three children um, to, to a year of school back home in Nigeria. And, um, you know, I, I, a lot of people reached out to me and, and asked, asked for different ways of how, how they could help and how they could be, be part of it. I decided to to create a foundation, a charity organization, I call it a charity organization called KO Back to School Initiative. Um, KO Back to School Initiative is, is a, a platform where we use education to transform the lives of children in developing countries. It's, uh, it's, it's brand new. I'm, I'm still in the process of, of getting it off the ground, but uh, we're in the process of registering the, the organization and officially um, right now, we're working on a website, actually, kobacktoschool.com. Really, my way of, of not just giving back, and which is, which I'm, I'm very big on giving back, but it's not just giving back, but it's also about inspiring other people that listen. You know, whatever it is, you know, you don't, you don't need, you don't need to make the, you don't need to take the, the biggest step to start anything. You know, you start gradually. You can, you can, you can start small and end up making. The difference that changes the world. 2020 brought brought challenges. 2020, we lost some loved ones. You know, a lot of people went through different challenges in lives in in, in their lives. And and uh, KO initiative was just my way of saying, hey, and not just me, but you can take an initiative. No matter who you are, no matter where you're from, be the change that you want to see. Hashtag be the change you want to see. That's one of our hashtags. I'm a very uh, I'm a very homebody homebody guy. Uh, I love to read. I love to read books. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really, I don't really do too much outside of, outside of train. Um, I play the piano, um, I box, 
I, I work out and, uh, you know, I spend time with close friends and, uh, and I, obviously I, I, I love my family. So, um, that's a little bit about me and, uh, thanks for tuning in and this is my perspective.